Does masturbation really drain your sperm and make it harder for you to become a dad? Today I am going to show you what really happens when you ejaculate and explain why in most cases masturbation should be the least of your fertility worries. Stick with me because at the end of this video you'll see why timing, lifestyle and simple science matters far more than how often you, you know what. Inside your testicles, millions of tiny cells begin their 64-day transformation into mature sperm. Now once they are ready, they move into a snug little tube called as the epididymis. It's kind of like a waiting room where they hang out there until they're needed. And every day your body makes fresh sperm. Any that get too old are quietly broken down and reabsorbed so your system never really runs out. Now picture a dam holding back a reservoir of water, masturbation or sex is like opening up the floodgates. You release the batch of sperm and the fluid. Right after that, your sperm numbers dip just like how it's in the reservoir levels. But here's the interesting part, leave the gates closed for about 2-3 to three days and the reservoir refills to its highest level, giving you maximum volume and concentration. But if you keep the gates closed for too long, say like a week or more, these sperm waiting in the pipeline start to sit in stagnant water. They face more wear and tear which can hurt their swimming ability and their DNA health. In other words, there's a sweet spot, not too soon, not too late. Yet even that sweet spot is quite flexible which brings me to my next point. Does daily masturbation kill your fertility? Maybe you heard of salmon retention, the idea that men should hold off on masturbation to boost their fertility. In reality, numerous studies show that healthy men maintain good sperm concentration and movement even if they ejaculate every single day. Your testicles are like a factory running non-stop. They keep producing fresh sperm no matter how often you clear the shelves. Now this obviously doesn't mean that you should push yourself to the limits every day, but it means that you can relax about occasional or even frequent masturbation. Your fertility won't vanish overnight if you do your thing. Now there is one scenario however where abstinence really matters. When you are about to give a seven sample for testing, IVF or sperm freezing, your clinic usually might ask you for two to five days of abstinence without ejaculation. Why? Because they want a robust sample with plenty of volume and enough healthy swimmers to measure properly or use for treatment. But once your sample is collected, you can go back to your normal rhythm. You really won't be boosting your long-term fertility by skipping masturbation outside of those critical few days. So if masturbation really isn't the villain, who is? Here are some real fertility killers. Smoking tobacco, heavy drinking and diet full of processed food can literally damage your sperm cells. Your testicles need to stay cooler than your body temperature, so tight underwear, hot tubs and laptops on your lap are all culprits. Environmental toxins like pesticides, heavy metals and certain medications can really disrupt your hormone balance and sperm factories. Also chronic stress floods your body with cortisol which can throw off your testosterone and slow your sperm production. So focusing on these factors will give you a much bigger fertility boost than worrying about masturbation frequency. Now here's a pro tip, healthy orgasms can actually help your fertility indirectly. Because they release endorphins which are your body's natural feel-good chemicals and they lower stress and support better hormonal health. So yes, a calm, confident you makes healthier sperm. Here's the deal, masturbation is a natural healthy part of life. When it comes to building your family, it's a very minor note in a much bigger symphony. Remember, the true conductors of your fertility are your overall health, timing and the choices you make every day. If this video cleared up your doubts, please give it a like, subscribe for more honest fertility advice and also comment below if you have any questions left. Let me know what myth you would like me to tackle next. Thank you so much for watching.